tonight about something in this week's Torah portion that's a little strange. It's a little bit hard for us to relate to, but I will show you that this is very, very relevant to everyone's life. It's very deep, but it's very, very relevant. Okay? Let's try to understand. So there is a discussion in this week's Torah portion about the camp, the encampment of the Jewish people. And what there was, was there were three sections. There was the inner area, which was where the tabernacle was, the Mishkan was. Okay? That was obviously the highest level of holiness, because that's what God's presence was. That's where the ark was, where God spoke to, to Moses from. That was the central spot. Around that were the Levites. And the Levites, oh, good to see you, Akiva, welcome. The Levites were the next level. Okay. And then after that was the encampment of the Jewish people, three tribes on each of the four sides, as we mentioned last week. Okay. Now, here comes this law. It's kind of just mentioned in two verses and not much. What's the law? There are certain kind of people that can't come in to each of these three camps. They have certain kind of spiritual impurity, and they are not allowed to come into certain areas. Okay? What are the three types of impurities? One is called Tumas Mace. Tumas Mace means they came in contact with the dead. Now, I hate to tell you all, but basically everyone in the world today has this shortcoming of being coming in contact with the dead. Because even if you never went to a funeral, somebody else did, and you touch them and they touch somebody else. So this is unfortunately a problem because it deadens our spiritual sensitivities. As an aside, that is the famous red heifer, okay? There were, there were gonna be seven in history. We need one more that we're gonna find. But the, the Moshe made the first of the red heifers, which, which was a, 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 a cow, a young cow, and it was, didn't have even two black hairs on it, all red. And from the ashes of that, they made this special uh, special thing, special mixture that would purify people from this impurity of the dead. Right? Again, we don't know what it is, but we do know the Kabbalists tell us that, you know, the whole story, if someone would remove that, it'd be like taking a veil off from their minds, they understand the world very, very differently. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you can't, you're, you're foggy, like in the morning, you and sometimes, you know, all of a sudden, like you have a cup of coffee and you wake up. So this is the ultimate cup of coffee. It's going to pull up the, the, uh, the cobwebs and you're going to see things. But in past times, they had the ashes of this red heifer and therefore people were purified. And if they came in contact with the dead, then it would be a seven day process until they would become pure. So. If somebody became impure, they were, into, they were in contact with the dead, they're allowed to go into the first camp, the camp of the Israelites. They can go there. They can go to the second camp, which is the camp of Levites. But they can't go into the tabernacle area. That's forbidden for them. Okay? Same thing when they built the, the temple. You couldn't go into the temple if you were, if you were impure from this type of impurity of coming out of the dead. Okay, that was one. Now, another kind of person was called a Zav and a Zava. A Zav and a Zava, uh, I don't know if we really, I mean, we have it today probably. It's not so well known what that is exactly. But what it is, is, is sort of for a man to have certain type of seminal discharge, which is not in, in, in any type of, passionate situation with with the with with some with with a woman but rather the, he's just having some kind of discharges that are are at wrong times inappropriate somehow something's going on in his system 
and a woman is seeing blood not during her menstrual cycle, but something else is going on. Okay, that's called the Zav and the Zav. The law is they can't go into the Holy of Holy, they can't go into the temple area, tabernacle, but they can go to the first level of the camp of the Israelites. They can't go to level two, which is the level of the Levites, that they can't go. Something wrong. They have some kind of issue, and that's some kind of impurity, and they can't go into the Levite place. Okay. Then there's the third type. And this is uh, maybe the strangest of all the impurities, because we don't know this is at all. But there was, it's called leprosy, but it's not the physical leprosy. It was a spiritual malady that happened to someone where they got these white spots on their body. And it came from speaking slanderously of other people, Lush and Hara. This guy, he, oh, Mickey's here. Good to see you, Mickey. This Good guy to see you, Rabbi. can't go into the um, temple area. Can't do that. He can't even go into the Levite area, but he's not even allowed to go into the camp of the Israelites. Who, who are we talking about? Talking about a guy who has this type of problem called uh, tsaras, the spiritual malady. It's not leprosy, but it looked like leprosy a little bit. And it, it came as a res result of people speaking improperly. It's a spiritual disease. We don't have it today. But that was the third of this group. So let me review for those who just came. So again, there are three, in this Torah portion, there are three kinds of people. And for some reason, each one has this different level of where they have a problem. Guy who is speaking badly about people and he gets this kind of saras leprosy, he can't go to any of the three camps. Not the Israelite, not the Levites, make you a Levite, Levites, and not into the area of the tabernacle. The second person is having these, these male and female type of emissions that are not normative. They can go into the camp of the Israelites, but they can't go into the middle camp. They can't be Levites. And then the last one is a person who came in contact with the dead. He can go into the camp of the Israelites. He can go into the camp of the Levites, but he cannot go into the tabernacle area. Okay. Now, I got to explain this to you all because this sounds like, what does this have to do with me? Right? What does this have to do with me? Uh, you know, I, there's no tabernacle, and there's no, uh, you know, there's no, there's no, uh, we don't even, some of these impurities, we don't even know what they are exactly. So, what does this have to do with us? Why is certain ones can go this far, not that far? Why only these three? There are other types of impurities. What's significant about these three things? The guy who speaks badly and gets leprosy, the guy who has some type of emissions, male or female, that have some, some strange emissions, and the guy becomes impure to the dead. What's going on? Okay. So... Let me share with you an amazing, amazing, and very relevant teaching that comes from Ethics of Afaz Perkyavos. It says there that there are three things that take a person out of this world. Three things that if you or anyone else you know is caught up in any of these three things, they will blow themselves out of the world. What are these three things? So the first one is jealousy. Okay? Somebody who is obsessed and jealous of other people, he can completely blow himself out of the world. Okay? Famous example they have in the, in the Talmud, it says that the, one of the kings of, of, of Israel, the first king of Israel, his name, was named Yeruvim ben Nevat, Yeruvim, he was originally a righteous guy, and then he stopped the Jews from going down to Jerusalem to go to the temple. The reason why he did this was because he realized that they realized he's not the real king, the real king is from Judah. So he, he put guards and he led the Jews astray. And whatever this means, the Talmud says at one point in his life, God grabbed him by his, his cloak and said, return Return your of them, and you, me, and, and the son of Yishai, David, will stroll together in the Garden of Eden. It's a pretty good offer. 
So you know what Yeroham said? Shmuel, you know what he said? He said, who's first? Who's first? Me or David? So God says, well, David's number one, but you're the second greatest in the whole world. If David's number one, I'm not going. Jealousy knocks you out of the world. Okay, let's look at another one. The second one, it says, is desire. Let's discuss it. Desire is not a bad thing. But uncontrolled desire will knock a person out of this world. This is, these are stories in everyday newspaper, right? People who, who gave up everything they built, their whole life, their whole family, everything, because they got caught up in desire they couldn't control themselves. And they give the whole one? What's the last one? The last thing that knocks you out of this world if you get stuck with this is over pursuit of honor. And you can see that people will do things because they want people to, to honor them. So they get obsessed with it. They'll, they'll do the craziest things. They'll literally, they'll literally do things that, that, that could be illegal because they, they need people to look at them in a certain way. These three things, these three traits will destroy a person if they get them. Now, I want you to think a second. These three traits if you were to think about all the possible relationships there are, you'd realize that these three traits all represent a breakdown in one of the three types of relationships. What is that? Let me explain. First of all, those who know, there is a uh, three cardinal sins, that a Jewish person needs to give his life up for and not do. In other words, normally the Torah says to live by the Torah. If somebody says, hey, go and eat some non-kosher food and they'll kill you. So okay, if, they, if, if, if they're doing it for their, their own pleasure, they, they, they have a perverse pleasure, you, you could do it to save your life. But if they say go and, and, and bow down to idols, take on, on a, an adulterous, another religion, uh, adulterous, uh, uh, idolatry, commit illicit relations, certain things, three things in the world, the person's got to give their life up instead of doing these three things. You know what the three things are? Idolatry, illicit relations, and you know what the third is? Murder. Somebody says, kill this guy or I kill you? You guys say, kill me first. I'm not going to kill somebody else. Wait a minute. Those are the three cards that you have to give your life up for. Now look how those three line up exactly with the three traits we talked about. Okay? How is that? There are three kinds of relationships in this world. You know what they are? Man to his fellow man. You to the outside world. Woman, man, woman. A person to another person, a person to another entity. That's one type of relationship. You know what type of relationship is? Man to God. Right? Some commandments are to act in certain ways to other people, don't steal, and some are to act, act to God. Blasphemy. So don't do different certain things. What's the third kind of relationship there is? That's the tricky one. Between you to yourself. Ah, very good. Between human beings and themselves. Because sometimes it doesn't affect somebody else. And it's not to God, but, well, it is to God. It is to God because if you hurt yourself, you're actually ruining that relationship. But, but a person to himself, he's in his own room, and he's damaging himself because he's not, he's not relating to himself properly. Those are three kinds of relationships. Now watch how beautiful this is, Mickey. So all three line up. You have the trait of, of let's say, let's take, um, let's take um, man is fellow man. So which of the three traits does it line up with? Jealousy, honor, or, or desire? And the answer is obviously jealousy. Jealousy. 
Jealousy. People are jealous one to the other. And what sins align to the three cardinal sins? Obviously, murder. Because the first murder in history, Cain and Abel, Cain and Hevel, was because one was jealous of the other. So here is a breakdown in relationships between you and the outside world. That is when you're jealous of someone, it breaks. I, don't, I can't have a good relationship with this person. They're, they're in my space. They're taking away what's mine. I'm jealous of them, and that leads to murder. And that means you can't relate to other people properly. That's one. Let's say the second one. Let's say the second one. So, so now we have, let's take um, desire. Desire, that will line up with the sin of illicit relations. And where is that a breakdown in? What relationship? Man to himself. That's how particular God is. Maybe as a family wants you to help. One time I said, good. It did your thing. But I still want to be connected with you. We're, we're, we're a team. Dave. This is Dave. Israel and God Dave, is a team. Uh, um, a break in here? I, I don't know what that is. It's Rabbi, um, I've got a definition here. Hold on, Mickey. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say this idea. I'm going to take everything. Right, here. So, Mickey, just hang, hang in. I'm going to talk first, and then we're going we're gonna to open it up for everybody. Okay, fair enough. Okay. So just hang in, Mickey. I'd love to hear you again. So not like this. So the second one is desire. So desire means that, that a, um, a person can't control themselves. And that, that is that leads to illicit relations. Okay, that makes sense. Now, the third one is the hardest to get. What was the third one? The third one was man to God. Okay, that's the cardinal sin of idolatry. That makes sense. But how is that honor? Why is that honor? So let me explain something about deep, about deep about what idolatry was in its roots. Idolatry in its roots was the idea, and, and this is even, even in the world today, but people are people largely, you know, have some sense of there being one God, but as we know, people mix it up and this and that. But what does idolatry mean in essence? It means like this. If I subjugate myself to one source of everything, God, you can't fool God. You can't, you know, say a magic incantation and get what you want. You can't go and pretend this and pretend that and do something and say, oh, now I fooled God. You can't do that. There's no way to do it. What was idolatry? The original idolaters were people that knew how to manipulate things in the spiritual worlds. And their goal was to try to, instead of relating to the source of everything, relate to some of the powers that God put into the world. They would try to relate to the power they thought the sun was. And originally, as Maimonides says, they knew that the sun was only a servant of God. But they didn't want to go to the source. Originally, they thought it's good to honor the sun, too. It's a servant of God. Then they said, you know what? Let's manipulate the powers, whatever they are, and we'll get what we want. So you know where that's a breakdown in? Man and God, because the person, they want to honor themselves. They don't want to honor God. I want to honor because what I want is I want people I, I want to manipulate the world to get what I want. But if, if you really realize you're relating to one source of everything, there's no way to fool or, or manipulate, then you have to come, come clean. So honor is a breakdown between man and God, and it is the root of idolatry. Okay, great. These are the three things. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say something amazing. And fantastic. These three things were exactly in the sin of the Garden of Eden. That's what the Kabbalists tell us. It was in the whole story of the sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And although Adam and Eve had a good rationale, 
the rationale, the deep rationale they had was, listen, we want to eat from this fruit and the world will be confused and concealed and we'll choose God anyway. That was they thought. But the way they ended up concealing themselves was entering into the worst parts of the world, which are these three things. And that's why it says in the text, it says, she saw the tree and it was desirous. That was desire. And then they brought death into the world, right? Because what happened was, it said, oh, if, 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 if Chava eats and Adam doesn't eat, then she'll die and he'll marry somebody else. So they, they, they gave it to each other. They gave it to the animals. So they brought death into the world, murder. Okay? Jealousy. They had desire. And they saw the tree was desirous. And where is the break down between man and God? Amazing thing. The first thing the snake says, that Nacha serpent says to Adam, is if you eat from the tree of knowledge, you will become like God. you become like God. Now, you're going to say to me, come on, that's crazy. Who, who really wants that? Who really believes that? But you understand something. There's a very, very deep component in a person where people want to be independent. And it's a good thing. It's a good place. Because there is a place in the world where, where people would sometimes rather own their own business than work for someone else if they're making less money. Why? Because I don't have to be told what to do. And so therefore, that place in Adam when the serpent said, ooh, if you go and you will eat this tree knowledge, you'll become like God. Hey, good to see you, Steve. Good to see you. Welcome. You'll become like God, right? So, so that was the attraction. So Adam was like, wow. And that was where he went off was the honor was going to be mine. I was going to be my own boss. I will determine my own fate. This process is in the beginning of time. These three relationships are the source of all the potential problems where a person can misuse it from the story of Adam going on throughout all of history. And that's what we said in the beginning. Three traits will take you out of the world. Jealousy, because now you can't control yourself with those relations, knocks you out of the world. Honor, you can't relate to God. You, you can't say, hey, wait a minute, the honor shouldn't be mine. The honor is his. I'm, I'm an extension. I'm an emissary, a servant, whatever, whatever, however you want to, you want to say, take it. But, but you, have to, you have to go to the source. And the last one is jealousy, that people can't realize that everyone has what belongs to them, and you will not have what belongs to me, and I will not have what belongs to you. Everyone has their own special thing in the world, and that's a breakdown in human interaction because people think everyone is going to somebody else's domain. Okay. Guys, good. Those are the three... Lines and three relationships. Now let me show you how this ties in exactly to this week's Torah portion. And I'm going to show you how it ties into your life. Exactly. So what do we say? It's like this. The three areas you can't go into, we had the first guy who was the leper, the Mitzarah. Yeah, it's a rot. So Mitzorah, what happens is, is that he spoke badly about somebody else. Therefore, he cannot relate to others. He's not part of the community. He can't even get along. He can't even start to be part of the process. He is jealous of everyone else, which is why he speaks badly about other people, and which is why he has this saras. So the statement is, hey, buddy, you can't come in 
to the area of the people because you need to understand that you're not relating to people. You're distancing yourself by having this jealousy and thinking that somebody else has more than you, better than you, and not appreciating what you are. And therefore, you're and speaking to other people. And the guy's leprosy. He has to pull out of even the third camp, the camp of the Israelites of the whole people. Okay, very good. Who is the second person? The second person was what we call the Zav or the Zava. These people having these, these emissions, the, the male part and female part, were having certain inappropriate emissions, which was a spiritual symbol. There was something happening on the desire level that was not right. And therefore, they weren't allowed to go into the second camp, the Levites, because the Levites, what they were doing is they were purifying and the, the, the songs they sang was to bring holiness to the people. So there was a certain place in the Levite system which they removed any negativity and they would they were become pure. So the person who was disconnected from purity because he couldn't control himself, he said, hey, so you can control yourself and master yourself, you can't even go into the area of Levites. Because that second area is the area preparing for a person for holiness. Let's about the last one. The last one is maybe the most complicated. The last one is the person who became impure to the dead cannot go into the, the holy area, the tabernacle, the temple. Why not? Why, why can't he go into there? Just to understand something. When Adam and Eve were created, they were created to live forever. Now, what happened? Why that stop? So let me give you an example. When you have an appliance in your kitchen, you want it to work, there's two ways you could do it. One is you just put batteries in, and one is you take the, the plug and you put it in the socket. What's the difference? Why is it better to do one than the other? And the answer is very simple. Because a battery has a certain amount of energy, and when it uses that, it's gone. When you plug into the source, you can keep using the, the, the item because you plug into the source. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden were plugged into the source. They, their whole being was connected to God, and therefore, why should they die? They were plugged into the source. Once they said, I can be like God, they cut themselves off and said, okay, I'm not plugging the source anymore. And therefore, they didn't have that eternal connection because they made themselves separate. And that's why death came into the world. And that's why in Hebrew, it's an amazing thing. The Hebrew word death, met, when you spell it backwards, it spells the word tam. Tam means pure. Somebody who's Tom was pure with God. He's so connected, so he, he can keep going. He's plugged in. Somebody who cuts himself off, he needs his own battery pack. And that could last 80 years, 90s, 100s, whatever or less. Once Adam and Eve cut themselves off by saying, we're going to be our own God, what they honor for us, they brought death into the world. They died. And that is the source of Tumas Mace, of the impurity of death. And that's why they can't go into the area of the tabernacle or the temple, because that's the area where you say, no, there's a source to the world, and then we'll live forever. But if I bring us up from the source, death's coming into the world. That is the three different levels that we have here. I want to share one more deep, deep idea, and then we'll open some questions. And this is something we've been talking about the past couple of weeks with, uh, with uh, personality traits also. These three levels are in you. Every person has these three levels in them. You have, we talk about the physical level, the lower part, which is the desire. Then you have the middle level, which can be Used properly and properly, but that is lined up with your, 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 your emotional yearnings. And then you have the mind. How do these three things work? Watch. The lower part of the person is, represents the desire. And, the, and the, the, the mystics talk about the part of the soul, or the, or the, the nefesh that, that's in charge of that. 
So when a person has desire, what do you do? You, you don't cut it off, but you understand that the desire has to be part of something greater. Because if you just cut yourself off from your root of what your head is, you get stuck, you get lost. So the, the aspect of desire of a person is so crucial. The sages tell us that you have to use it and not get sucked into it. Because when you do, you knock yourself out. That's the lower part of the person. And that's also when the person is a child. A child, a baby, what is their main issue? Their main issue is, is pleasure. They, they cry, they're hungry. They're th- it's, all, it's all physical. You get a little older, what happens? And this is an amazing thing. You think back when you were 20 and 30, it starts to change. When you're, when you're a kid, you'll do anything for, for the pleasure of it. You don't really care. You don't care how you look and you don't care how you make an idiot out of yourself. You don't really care because it feels good. At a certain point, you get a little older. And now you think about your career. What am I going to do? How am I going to express myself? That's the middle part of a person. And that lines up with, we call, jealousy in the negative. And you know what it is in the positive? It's ambition. Positive is, is that, you know, one guy is only stuck in physical pleasures. The second person says, I want to become something. I want to express my my skills. I want to express my talents. I want to bring out my, my profession. Well, that's great. That's using the middle section, the hard area, the personality, the emotions in a positive way. But in a negative way, it's going to be jealousy because it means I got to be better than that guy. Forget who I am. I got to be better than they are. That's the second area of the person. And the final area, the area of the temple is here. And what happens there? What happens there? You have to say like this. So my mind is, 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 has the ability to think incredible, credible things. When I start thinking to myself, you know what, how great I am? I, my mind is what's going to dictate. I'm not going to connect back into the source. And I have my thoughts, and I, you know, I don't really care what God thinks about it. I, you know, I, I know better. Then what happens is you cut yourself off from the mind's ability from the from the, the, the holy's ability from the from the temple and tabernacles area to hook him back to the source. These three things are the pathways, the three relationships, man to his fellow man, man to himself, man to God, the three parts of our body, the three parts of the of the encampment of Israel, those are the areas that a person can use for good and uses desire, uses ambition, uses mind. For good, or it could totally knock him off when he cuts it off from the source. If the desire is just for desire's sake, and the ambition is just for your for yourself, and the mind is not connected back to its source, those things will knock the person out of the universe. But if he uses them properly, he's able to enter into the camp of the Israelites and the camp of the Levites, and even into the camp of the temple itself. Okay, that's my thought, and let's open up to some questions, thoughts, and ideas. Everybody's shy. <laughs> <laughs> You're not shy, Shmuel. You got something to say. <laughs> no. Mickey must have walked away. I know Mickey's never shy. <laughs> I never walk away. Yeah, Mickey, what's your question? Where do we start, Rabbi? Any place uh, you want. Okay, for those who are listening, uh, the rabbi, and just to let them know our relationship, I'm just, as we go back to Birmingham, and I followed the rabbi to Atlanta, I would follow him anywhere. But we had these interesting discussions, and I remember the rabbi had a full head of hair, and I had to ask him when we first met. Times have changed. Now, a person, rabbi, cannot really have a, a relationship with themselves, in my opinion. And for that, I have to read you something uh, relationship. Now, this comes from, a, a, I don't know how holy this book is. Um, 
Mary, tell, tell, tell me your thoughts. Mary, well, th these are my thoughts. Exactly what it says is my thought. Relationship, a way in which two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected or a state of being connected. I think when, when your soul, again, your soul in your body, a relationship very good, with very good, Shmuel, yeah, fair. your soul I'm in sorry, your body. We already have our answer ready for you. Keep going. Oh, uh, when you say a person has a relationship with your with himself, uh, I think it may be poetic and whatever, but I don't think you could ever have a relationship with yourself. A relationship historically means what your connections, communications, feelings, emotions are vis-a-vis -vis something else. If they are about yourself, that's no relationship. It's okay. just you. That's Good. that's my thought. I right. open up a response on that. I have other another statement, but we'll start with that. <laughs> so I think I'll let someone else come back to you. So let me answer the first one. So so uh, um, it's true in the classical sense of relationship, relationships means between between two entities. So the way I said it is not the traditional way of what a relationship is. However, what where the, where it is even in your definition relevant relationship is because in every person is a higher part and a lower part. What Shmuel said, the body and soul, the different part. There's, there's two parts of person themselves. So one part may not be pulling me one way, and one part pulls me another way. Absolutely. So the relationship is now is if I go and I say, well, there's a part of me that thinks this is the right thing to do. But a part of me says, well, I feel good doing this. Then if you're letting one control the other, then you're dictating a certain kind of relationship. So when I say the relationship between the man himself, what I really mean, Mickey, is that a person is true to their higher self. Because everyone knows that is a part of us that always is more petty or more uh, negative or something. And there's a voice in our heads that says, hey, listen, don't do it. And we know sometimes we succeed, sometimes we don't succeed. So where do you get the dichotomy? If you are just one entity, you're right. Uh, a, a horse, a horse is not a between him and himself. Whatever his instincts are, he does. So he does it himself. But a man, a human being, has a part that is higher and a part that's lower. And who is going to control the person is the battle of life. Now, of life is if the higher part dictates, you elevate the lower part. The lower part dictates, you you sink the higher part. Yes. But just I tell think, me your name. I, think, I, 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 your name. I think you can give. I'm sorry. No, I sorry. think you can give that. Uh, uh, according to the relationship between you and yourself, I think if you take it to the extreme, I mean, the best example is when people are depressed. So you literally they're fighting with themselves, like to to get up from the bed to to do things. That's a, that's a good uh, example for relationship between you and yourself. Yeah. yeah. When people depressed. Right. Doesn't be, it doesn't have to be desired. They're really fighting with themselves. But another class is different kinds of problems. That's one problem. Yes, 100%. I, I, you have to unmute yourself. I can't do it here. From I'm not the host. Can you unmute yourself? This is raw. Okay. I don't you know what about you guys. But... No, 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 no yeah, one second. I'm sorry, Mrs. Raw. Yes, yes, you. Yes, Mrs. Roll, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that I, I really like, this is what I love about Judaism, is when you talk about the traits within a person, from our background, we were always taught to subdue that part of yourself, try to get rid of it. In Judaism, you use it, it was all given by God, but you use it and funnel it in the way that it was meant to be. It's so freeing, instead of trying to beat yourself down right. to get rid of it. Thank right. you. Very good, very good point. It's 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 a very it's a it's a major a major point, because um, in Christian theology, you really can never be okay because the idea of original sin means you're not okay. In your essence, you're not okay. There's no way to get out of that essentially. 
But the truth is that that God gives us qualities and and there is a, a skill to, to say no to something, but then the quality is to bring out what is the good that you can bring out. Yeah. Rabbi, the way you explain it, as you usually in your wonderful, uh, you're basically saying a person thinks about and reflects back on what they're saying, and you're saying that that is in essence a conversation with themselves. And from that perspective, it makes a lot of sense. In other words, you make a decision and then you start asking yourself, it is a discussion with yourself. If you put it that way, I like it. Okay. But I have a have the <laughs> I'll tell you something, Mickey, and I'll tell you something with the great, the great uh, muster sages tell us. They say, if somebody doesn't feel any battle in them, they're probably losing. Uh, let's talk about chapter. Uh, why? One second. Because what happens oh. is when people get stuck in a negative process, the the higher voice in themselves gets further and further away. And so they keep doing it. And but when a person grows spiritually, there's new levels to grow to. So every time you make a good decision, you can have a new challenge to get even higher. And the greatness of a human being is when they deal with that with that that conflict and they succeed and they rise above it and they choose to become the greater person. That's very good. That's wonderful. Thank the you. Second, you. You and I had a long debate at the Kahila on the issue of jealousy. And I, because you had pointed out there were some, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because we didn't have a court reporter, next time we would, uh, that uh, you saw some positive effects to jealousy. My position at that time is there is absolutely nothing positive about jealousy to judge yourself by other people. Uh, now, maybe I'm in that. I'm not jealous of anybody. Anything I want is for me what I want. I care less that they're the greatest this or the greatest that. That's right. not, that's what I want. If you so admit good. that so great, this concept of jealousy, they have some benefit. And that's, you and I had a very big discussion on that point. Right. So let, let me ask you, I'll repeat to everybody what we said, said then. It's true. Jealousy is a very, very bad trait, as we said. And I've been explaining this the past few weeks because it's so crucial to realize because the problem with jealousy is the lack of understanding of self. It's lack of understanding that you are what God gave you, creating the divine image. There's something about you that is unique. That's you, that that is what your reality is. You don't want to trade that for anything. You don't want to be somebody else. You can't be someone else. It's like, it's like a person, you know, uh, like, a you know, a, I don't know, a, a something that's has, all the vehicle, the receptacles for one thing, it must be something else. It, it has all its potential for what it is. So jealousy is a very, very bad thing. However, and this is all said correctly, there is always a potential to use something in some way. So the Talmud asks, where is the potential to use jealousy positively? There must be a positive expression. So the Talmud says that if you can motivate yourself by seeing people who are growing spiritually, not that you want to be them, then it's bad. I agree with you, Mickey. If you want to then be them, that's bad. But if you see someone who is spiritually advancing and you say, wait, that's what I should be doing for myself, then you've used jealousy properly. It's motivated you. But why do I have to judge myself by what, something. What, by what they do, Rev? I, I want to judge myself by what I want. That's right. You should. You should. I'm, I can't hear me. I'm not saying you say I want to be them. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that there is a place where you live in a social circle. You're influenced by things. And that's why if you hang out with bad people, you're not going to be doing too well. If you hang around with people that are, are growing a certain way, it has an effect on you. And the sages tell us, Use that quality. Use that. Use and say, listen, not that I want to be them, but I see them growing spiritually. I'm kind of lazy. And I say, you know what? Wow, that is the right thing to do. Now, I don't want to be them. 
but I want to apply that quality to myself for what I am.